Welcome to Amp Up, the show where we take a website that needs a little help and we amp it up. Today, we're working on a site called Coming Out Space. This site is an open source library of diverse coming out stories for the LGBTQ community and for anyone else who wants to learn. The site's about to unveil an exciting new coming out story from world famous YouTube personality, Gigi Gorgeous. This auspicious occasion provided a perfect opportunity to spiff up the site. Says site founder Nate Warden. We've wanted to move Coming Out's website to AMP for a while because um, the majority of our site traffic actually comes from Google search. And we know that uh, speed is an important factor in search rankings. And also, the majority of our site traffic, probably 50 to 60%, comes from mobile devices. So speed's extra important there. Coming Out Space is built on WordPress. Unfortunately, I'm not a WordPress developer. Fortunately, Jessica Duarte volunteers her time to develop this site and she was excited to learn about AMP and to try out the new official AMP WordPress plugin. Hey, Jessica. Hi, Ben. I also just happen to be personally acquainted with Alberto Medina, who's leading this plugin effort. He'll tell us a bit about how to use this plugin and about progressive WordPress sites in general. Hey, Alberto. Hi, Puck. Now that we've met everyone, let's take a look at those story pages. So this is a pretty standard, straightforward site. And yet, it's got about 20 JavaScript files and almost as many CSS files. So our plan is to make the story pages all AMP all the time. Right, Jessica? Yeah, there's really no need for a paired mode where each page is AMP and non-AMP. Since the AMP pages look identical to the non-AMP pages and they're faster, why not just make it AMP all the time? And I imagine that very little of the CSS and JavaScript actually is used in this page anyway. It's just texts and images and photos, kind of basic stuff. But then there's this fancy menu over here. This menu is made by this tap tap plugin and it does use JavaScript. But I bet we can keep the same look and feel by using AMP. Let's try that automatic AMP plugin. So while Jessica is installing the plugin, I'm going to try to remember what Alberto once told me about how to use it. Think, Ben. Think. Ben, activate it and see what happened with the AMP site. If you see any visual or functional disparity, just use the information that the plugin gives you and you will find where to fix the problem. You have everything you need. Just do it. All right. OK, I've installed the plugin, and I'm going to set it to native mode, so it will convert the pages to AMP all the time. And I'm setting it only to convert the posts, because that's where all of our story pages are. Let's see what it does. How did we do? We did so great. It looks amazing. It's so good that I'm going to have to compare it to our actual non-AMP page to see what didn't work. Well, here's one thing, of course. The fancy menu doesn't work anymore. That isn't surprising because the AMP plugin removed its JavaScript. Something a little bit more significant, though, is that I'm noticing on our video story pages, the videos are not coming through. And that's because we were loading our videos using a combination of an ID entered into an advanced custom field on the back end and a short code with a plugin called Fluid Video Embeds. Now, this plugin is injecting a lot of code into the front end to load that YouTube video, and we really need a better solution. AMP to the rescue. With AMP, we can use what are called AMP YouTube elements, and we can still use our ACF information, our ID that we entered into the backend with AMP YouTube. I'm just going to change that right here in my code and take a look at the difference. It's unbelievable how much faster it is now. Wow. I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. It is almost impossible to tell how long it takes because it's, it's just immediate. It's so much easier as a coder to implement uh, AMP YouTube videos in WordPress because I no longer need to use the plugin, of course, but also uh, some people often use plugins, jQuery plugins, to make the videos responsive. But AMP YouTube video embeds are responsive automatically. I'm seeing a general principle here. If you're a WordPress developer, if you use plugins to do things, you can often instead use AMP components, and you'll have less JavaScript and less extra CSS. Yeah, it's easier and it works way better. All right, so let's continue looking at our page here. I see that another really important part of our page is missing now with AMP, and that is our social sharing icons. Mm. So I'm going to take a look at our template here. And yes, as you can see, we are using 
a Jetpack plugin to load some sharing buttons at the bottom of our page. Uh, these are important. We can't do without them because we want everyone to share our coming up stories as much as possible. So we need to find an alternative solution. The great news is that AMP has another element called AMP Social Share that allows us to very simply insert sharing buttons for any social media platform into our page and took some of that code from the AMP documentation pages and put it in. I'm going to delete this Jetpack code, and that also means I can deactivate Jetpack. So Jetpack is really a great plugin and has all kinds of features, but use it only for one feature in this case. Exactly. It seems like a lot for just one little feature. So let's take a look here. I've entered my social sharing buttons with AMP Social Share. I can also give them a height and a width because I want to make them round like the rest of the site. I want them to match across the entire website. So I can add a class in addition to the height and width and simply use a border radius in my CSS to target that AMP element and make the icon circular. So it's really easy and they work right off the bat. So I'm also noticing there's some fonts like Font Awesome in there that aren't being used in the page. And also there's extra CSS still. So how do we get the fonts you don't want off of there? So currently we are loading all of our CSS using a WP and Q function in a file called bones.php. It's functions.php in most WordPress websites, but our theme uses a separate file. So I'm going to go in there and take a look at what we've enqueued to begin with. And with WordPress, I can use something called a WP underscore DQ function to actually remove those on our single pages. So in the same function where I added my CSS for my social sharing buttons, the amp-style .css file that I showed you, in that very same function, I can simply use WP to Q and using the IDs from all the CSS style sheets that were enqueued originally, I will simply DQ them. While she's doing that, Alberto, about this plugin, what do you mean when you say a progressive WordPress site? The web has evolved quite a bit in recent years. So when we talk about the notion of progressive WordPress, we are thinking about WordPress, a WordPress platform where things like modern development workflows, coding and performance best practices, and the integration of modern web APIs are all commonplace. So in a nutshell, it's a WordPress platform where doing the right thing and building user-first experience is easy. What does this mean for WordPress that there's this new AMP plugin out there? I think that everybody agrees that we all want a progressive WordPress platform. The question is, with an ecosystem so big like WordPress, how do we walk to the progressive road as fast as we can? And here is where AMP enters the game. Because what AMP gives you in a nutshell is a set of powerful capabilities and optimizations out of the box that enables everybody to address three main issues, load time performance, runtime performance, and usability. So by integrating AMP into WordPress, we are enabling any developer and any site, independently of their skills or the size of the engineering team, to build awesome user experiences in WordPress. That is kind of magical. So without being a programmer, even knowing what actually is being spat out by the WordPress plugins, you can just make your site AMP, and it's just faster. Exactly. The good thing is that the plugin enables that in the standard content creation workflow of WordPress. So you can add components and things to your WordPress site, and they come out on AMP. Exactly. But of course, if you have plugins that add all this JavaScript and CSS, and the plugins suddenly lose the JavaScript and lose part of the CSS, things will stop working. So I guess the key is how to find those things exactly. and replace them with the right AMP components. Exactly. Uh, but the good news is that if you see the, the set of things that you have to do as a pie, the plugin gives you 90% like of the work. And then you have to do 10%. And the 10% consists exactly what you said. For every error, you can say, well, the plugin dealt with it properly because there is no functionality or visual parity that was lost. I'm fine with those. But some, for example, navigation menus could be a problem that are, if they are uh, enabled by JavaScript. So when you activate the plugin and you see that the menu doesn't work, you can see where the navigation script was deleted. And you say, oh, OK, I can use, for example, Unbind to do this. right? So and then you do it. Yeah. Well, I think because this is occurring right here today, we actually had a menu that ran with JavaScript. So now we're replacing the menu with AMP bind. Exactly. That's our exact plan. And most of the stuff that was there before that the plugin removed wasn't being used anyway. Uh, and that actually points to one of the new capabilities of the plugin that is different from before, is that now the plugin utilizes the underlying theme of the host ah, site. Uh -huh. So now that's why you see that they look identical, and the plugin could have tweaked certain things. But 
90% of the work is done because they're using the same template system. Yeah, the design didn't really change. Exactly, nothing Why changed. It? And it provides you CSS tree checking that it, the plugin is capable to determine of determining which CSS plays a role in every individual page and everything that doesn't, it wipes it out, keeping you doing the 50 kilobyte limit of AMP. That was impressive too because the site before had 340K of CSS. Exactly. I know it has not that much CSS and except for the menu, most things still look the same. So that's one of the powerful capabilities that now you, everybody can leverage. Very nice. Uh, so how'd that go with the enqueuing and dequeuing and so on? It worked. So now on our story pages, the CSS that I don't want isn't being loaded by the WordPress website. Are any app validation errors left here still? Uh, no, I made a few changes and we're in the clear. No validation errors. All right, so this video is already long enough now. Let's just kind of show Nate the site and uh, just don't show him the menu. Mm, you think that's really the right thing to do? Who are we to say what is right? I mean, I'm not a moral philosopher. No, she's right. We can't show Nate the site with the broken menu. So we're running out of time. Instead, we're going to just fix the menu in the next video. So tune in next time for Amp Up, coming out that space. Part two, the fancy menu. Thanks for watching. To learn more about Amp, just subscribe to the Amp channel. And see you next time on Amp Up.